spoiler talk, because that's always fun to gush about spoilers. I couldn't talk about my spoiler-free review. Them being spoilers and all. And that is a spoiler warning for people who haven't seen Spider-Man Homecoming. If you have not seen Spider-Man Homecoming, best to leave now or watch my spoiler-free Spider-Man Homecoming review. If you have seen it or don't care about spoilers, hi, welcome. Hello, welcome here in my channel. I'm not gonna give you a frame-by-frame, play-by-play. I'm just gonna talk about some of the spoilers I couldn't talk about in my spoiler-free review. Let's talk about how this movie opens up. I mean, first of all, like I said, you really empathize where Adrian Toomes, who's the vulture, you empathize where he's coming from because he put all this money into this project where he's like, all right, we're gonna clean up the streets, not like from crime, but from debris. That's right, his company's gonna clean up the fallout from the alien invasion battle from the first Avengers movie. He's gonna make a lot of money doing that. Then, I don't know, S.H.I.E.L.D. or the government or someone strolls in and is like, no, you're not, we're gonna do it. He gets boned out of money, so he's like, world's changing, boys. Damn, we changed to. So that's what they do. They go to Avengers battle sites and they scrape up all the tech and they make new weapons and then sell them on the street. Great scene with Donald Glover, which is funny because when people heard Donald Glover was going to be in the movie, they're like, dude, he's totally going to be Miles Morales. No, he's just a guy. He's just a guy who wants a gun. But when the shocker is showcasing the weapons, just <laughs> blowing shit in half, he's like, yeah, I just, I just want to hold someone up. I don't want to blast him back in time or something. Yeah, that was funny. But then it starts out, boom, a film by Peter Parker. And he's just vlogging. Shitty thing is, they ruined that in the trailer. It was just a bummer. I like seeing it in the trailer, but I just sometimes I'm not forward thinking enough. Sometimes I'm not like, oh, that's totally gonna ruin the experience when I see it for the first time in the movie theater. So when I saw it, I was like, it's great, but I have seen this. Damn it, Spider-Man trailer, stop that. And he's really antsy because Tony Stark's like, hey, we'll call ya, and then a couple months go by and nothing. Peter Parker wants to be Spider-Man. He goes out there and he's you know, doing small things, getting cats out of trees, saving bikes, stopping a guy from breaking into his own car, which is pretty funny because there's no manual to be being a hero. Especially when you're a teenage kid, you're a 15 year old teenage boy, you're gonna screw up a lot. But Tony Stark is not calling him, which is stupid. If you have a really smart super fan, you do not blow that kid off. That's how you create super villains. His friend Ned, very early on, finds out that he's Spider-Man. Just saw him crawling into the window, again, shown in the trailer. So at that point, his friend's kinda, he breaches on the grounds of being annoying. He's just asking him so many questions about being Spider-Man. Granted, I'd probably do the same thing. I'd probably find when we're hanging out, then I'd grill him. I wouldn't grill him in the middle of class knowing it would blow his secret identity. I mean, these kids are nerds, right? Like, they're down with comic books? Like, I, as one, I would know that you don't want to spoil that. I guess they don't have comic books in the comic book world, unless it's X-Men. Unless it's Logan. How about the scene in gym class, though, where those kids were playing Mary Fuck Kill? Just a few minors, just a few teenage girls playing Mary Fuck Kill in a Spider-Man movie. Nothing weird. The blonde one's Betty Brant, though. Elizabeth Banks played her in the Raimi Spider-Man. She's going to work for J. Jonah Jameson one day. But this movie has a lot of great Spider-Man imagery. It really does. Like, that scene where he's going to go into the party and ultimately he's like spider-man's not a party trick but he wants to go in there to impress people because it's like oh peter parker knows spider-man so they're like oh yeah bring spider-man so of course peter parker sneaks away he's in his spider-man outfit and he's looking into the party and the imagery is he's looking into the party you see the back of him in this from the neck down he's in the spider-man outfit and from the neck up he doesn't have the mask on so it's peter parker's head spider-man suit looking into the party the imagery is so completely spider-man to me so i remember that's the kind of image i saw so I think it was in one of those Viewmasters from the 80s. I knew of Spider-Man, I knew the stories, I had a Spider-Man TV tray. But when you're a little kid, you're like, ooh, what does he look like under that mask? I bet he's a really horrendous spider person. But then when I saw an image like that, I was like, oh, he's just a guy. The image will always stick with me. So when I saw that in the movie, it's like the movie went into my brain and pulled an image that completely changed my perspective on Spider-Man and threw it into this movie. And I have to think I'm not the only one with a moment like that for Spider-Man imagery. Funny thing is his friend Ned, I read somewhere online, it, it, literally, when I say I read somewhere online, someone tweeted it. As Twitter chatter goes, it's just Twitter chatter, but someone said that his friend Ned is supposed to be Ned Leeds? Who's one of the Hobgoblins? I don't see that. By a venture, I guess, I would say that dude is not going to become the Hobgoblin. However, if Peter Parker's friend Ned is Ned Leeds, Jr. and his father becomes the Hobgoblin in a future Spider-Man movie, cool. It does run into the thing that's just ultimately it's Spider-Man 101 at this point. Green Goblin is his best friend's father. If they go that route, Hobgoblin would be his best friend's father. And yes, in this movie, Adrian Toomes, AKA the Vulture, is his date's father. Yeah, the girl Liz, he has a crush on the entire time because this is a high school comedy. He finally asks her to homecoming and when he shows up to the door, boom, there he is. Michael Keaton answers the door. My first knee jerk thought was, Oh my gosh, he found out who he was. He has them all hostage. Then it took a second and I was like, nope. 
These are dad. I mean, I should have just been like, oh shoot, he's her father right out the gate, but I didn't. He wasn't even wearing his vulture get up. Why would he be wearing flannel if he's there as the vulture? No, he, of course he's her father. Mine's just racing 100 miles an hour. All I'm saying is it caught me off guard and I really liked it. Because he's such a dad. Like when you're there, Peter Parker's just turning pale white. It's like the whole time you're like, this guy's ultimately Heisenberg. He's doing what he's doing for his family. But you know when he flips that switch, man, it's going to be shits going down. So when they're in the car, he just pieces that shit together. I love the fact that he pieced it together because it's so obvious. It's like, oh yeah, you were there at the Washington Monument and then you disappeared and then Spider-Man showed up randomly. And he's kind of just taking it all in and then he's like, all right, gumdrop, go in. I'm gonna have to give him the dad talk. And she goes in and then he has his gun, his Glock, and he just leans over. He's like, does she know? I just really like that scene because he's pretty much like, you're gonna go in there, you're gonna show her a good time, you're gonna piss off and just stay out of my business. Funny thing is, this next job is his last job supposedly, so if he just pissed off, it would just be one job. I won't lie, I really thought about that. It's like, dude, he just does one more job and then supposedly he's out. And I am really tossing in my brain. It's like, would I just let him slide and let it go? I don't know and that's why Peter Parker is a better person than me. Because as Michael Keaton addresses in this movie, when he's talking to him, he's like, you're young. You don't know what it's like. And he's completely right. Peter Parker, Spider-Man, is young in this movie. He's 15 years old. He's not burdened with the complications of adult life. It's very black and white. It's like, no, these weapons you're making are bad. If he were older, he might be able to be like, all right, you're doing this for your family and you really got hosed by Tony Stark. You make a great point when you say Tony Stark also sold weapons. That's how he got his fortune. It might have been a different conversation if Peter Parker were older. That's all I'm saying. But he's young. He's a bit naive in that. That's what makes him glorious. He's like, nope, it's bad. You're going down. And then when that building falls on him, I love this scene because he's so completely a kid. He just gets crushed by the ceiling and he's screaming. He's like, he's crying. You feel so bad for him. You're like, dude, you are so out of your league. And you hear Tony Stark say, if you're nothing without the suit, then you shouldn't have it. Which is the new mantra. It's the new, with great power comes great responsibility thing. It's a thing he's going to remember that will keep him going in the toughest times. Tony Stark told him that when he totally screwed the pooch and had a shit blow in half. You saw it all in the trailer. I don't need to talk about it here. Exactly what you saw is what happened. Point is, he does a solid push up and throws that roof off of him. And you know, Spider-Man versus Vulture happens, but I thought that was so good. It's such a good moment. It's such a good moment of seeing him as a vulnerable kid, but also seeing him as the hero that is a better person than I. They went a different direction with Flash Thompson. I found that interesting. Flash Thompson was always the jock bully. That's the high school cliche that I always knew. It's like jock bully, nerd, the jocks pick on the nerd. And I've been out of high school for a little while. Maybe it's changed, but I like the fact that Flash Thompson, the bully, is actually part of Peter Parker's social group. You can't run from someone like that. It's a dick who's a part of your social circle. One thing I will give props on the amazing Spider-Man that they did is Flash Thompson is a Spider-Man fan who doesn't like Peter Parker. That's the irony. So it's interesting interesting in Spider-Man Homecoming 2 or Spider-Man, whatever they call it, I want to see if Flash Thompson is a fan of Spider-Man. Wasn't down on the Zendaya MJ reveal thing. The reason I'm not is this. Her character was fine and she was good in the role for what she was doing. She was her own character. Her name was Michelle or something like that. And I was totally fine with that. She's a snarky kind of dick that would be fun to hang out with, but you feel like she's totally friend-zoned with Peter Parker. You do not feel any romantic connection at all between these two. So in that, I was fine with her being Peter Parker's friend, but now she, at the end, she's like, oh, Michelle, my friend friends call me MJ. And I was like, why do you have to be MJ? Why can't you just be Michelle? I don't see why they had to go such a different direction with Mary Jane. It's like making Peter Parker's friend Ned be like, oh, my friends call me Harry Osborne. I just, why don't do that? Make him Ned and make her Michelle. I feel like the plan wasn't to make her MJ. Funny enough, all the rumors that came out like, ooh, is Zendaya, is she Mary Jane? They were like, no, she is not Mary Jane, swear. Technically speaking, they weren't lying because her name is not Mary Jane. It's Michelle whose friends call her MJ. But it kind of feels like the whole MJ MJ thing was a complete afterthought. Like she was her own character. Then the rumor came out and they were like, no, she's not mad. Ooh, wait a minute. We can make her MJ. Let's shoot a scene where we fill that in. All right, sweet. Afterthought. So I wasn't digging that, but we'll see how the sequel goes. Aunt May knows Peter Parker's Spider-Man. There is no hiding that shit now. You didn't get that from a Halloween store or something. No, that costume is legit. And of course, there are a couple post credit scenes. First one's in jail and it shows Adrian Toomes and he's walking up to, I believe it's Scorpion. Funny thing about this movie, this movie has a lot of side Spider-Man villains that you don't actually know are there. The shocker's a bit obvious. I heard the dude who makes everything's the tinkerer. I don't really know who the tinkerer is. But the dude who's talking to Adrian Toomes in jail has a Scorpion tattoo. I'm like, oh, 
Hey, he's Scorpion. He's like, rumor is you know who Spider-Man is. And Michael Keaton's like, if I knew, he'd already be dead. Which maybe he did it for the greater good because he saved his daughter's life. Probably not. He did tell him, if you cross me again, I'm going to kill you and everyone you care about. And he crossed him again, so I feel like that's going to go down. I feel like he just kept it to himself because when he gets out of there, he's going to want to kill him. And it looks like, oh my gosh, they might be setting up a Sinister Six movie in a proper way. And the second post credit scene is great. The first one was, you know, story-based. Second one is straight up a joke, but it's hysterical. That's right, Captain America has his PSA videos, which when I saw those in the trailer, I was like, isn't that dude kind of not in with the US government right now? A Civil War thing, he was on the opposing side. And so sure enough, when he was like, all right, you're in gym class. Gym teacher turns it off, he's like, I'm pretty sure that guy's a war criminal now anyways, or whatever. Glad they addressed that, but one of those PSAs comes on for you, the audience, and Captain America goes, we're gonna talk about something important, patience. Sometimes you wait around for something that just doesn't quite happen the way you think it should. Sometimes patience just doesn't pay off. It was just funny because everyone waits through the end credits and then gets a lesson about patience and how they wasted their time. Hysterical, I thought that was really funny. I, mean, I saw a few people in the comment section of my last video when I said there's a movie reference that happens and then the movie addresses that yes, it is a movie reference to that. It's when he's running across the lawns and it's a tracking shot with him and I was like, this looks a lot like Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Then that dude's on the grill and he's like, smells great. And I was like, that is a lot like Ferris Bueller's. Then it shows a clip of that scene from Ferris Bueller's Day Off and he swings by the pool. He's like, that's a great movie. Psh, splash. And he's gone. Thought that was awesome. That dude on the grill looked a lot like Cameron Fry, by the way. I looked it up on IMDb. He's not listed as him. All I'm saying is dude on the grill and the Ferris Bueller's Day Off reference looked a lot like Cameron Fry from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Guys, in the end, Spider-Man Homecoming was still great the second time I saw it. I actually, I'm able to appreciate a movie more the second time because I'm not, you know, picking it apart and looking for things to critique for a review. I get to sit back and just kind of enjoy myself a little more. What do I like more? Spider-Man Two or Spider-Man Homecoming? Guys, really, I don't know. I watched Spider-Man 2 last night. I watched Spider-Man Homecoming tonight, so they're both fresh in my mind. Spider-Man 2 does have things you look at now that didn't age as well as you would hope they would. Just logic things. Like, Spider-Man should be able to lay out Doc Ock with one punch. Just blah. Oh yeah, you didn't get super strength. You just got arms. Now you're unconscious. But as a movie, as a whole, it's fantastic. Spider-Man Homecoming is fantastic. I won't be able to assess which one is better for about a decade. So I'll get back to you on that. But now that Spider-Man Homecoming is out, Spider-Man Homecoming, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Or what's your order of the Spider-Man movies? Greatest to least. Whatever it is, whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.